What is up, everybody? It's Sis Edmund Sean here, and you might notice a different camera angle. I got a new desk, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, today, I want to talk about some new Sis Edmund news. So you've probably been following a little bit, but you might not have heard this new update. Essentially, MGM Resorts got hacked and it took down pretty much everything connected to a computer. Their websites were down, ATMs were down, slot machines were down. You had to make reservations via phone. Everything had to be done via phone. And we're talking like, all things sleeping computer did the first article that i found on it um you know it discusses that they've had a cybersecurity issue they're working on getting their systems back we've got things down here's phone numbers to call our mobile app's not working here's photos you know from instagram and stuff great article from bleeping computer covering uh pretty much the basics of what happened and apparently in 2019 they had already been uh, had, they had had another cybersecurity incident that cost them the data of 10 million customers. Um, so that kind of kind of stunk, but it took until 2020 for them to confirm that the breach happened after people found the data online. So today an update came out, which was posted on Gizmondo. And of course I will have, uh, or Gizmodo, I guess there's no end in that. I will have the links in the description below so you guys can go read these articles and enjoy them and, and give some credit where credit's due to these authors. Essentially, the entire cyber attack was done via phone, social engineering. They contacted um, the front, the service desk. They looked up somebody on LinkedIn that worked for tech support at MGM. And within 10, uh, in about 10 minutes, uh, the this group claims, uh, which is, they go by ALPHV, or also known as Black Cat. They claimed 10 minutes, we got admin creds and we did everything we needed to do without ever having to break through any sort of vulnerability that wasn't patched or any sort of web server that was exploitable via the internet or anything like that. All right, what is up everybody? This had been Sean from uh, right after this video had been edited. Uh, basically, I missed a source and I wanted to fix my video before I got to put it out there. So everyone sees that I'm trying to do my best to cover all parts of this. So after getting the video made and squared away, I went to Reddit and checked out the cybersecurity subreddit, which I should have done before I made the video. But anyway, it turns out that there is another group being listed as the group that took down MGM. And according to this Reuters article, Routers article, I can never pronounce this. It is a hacking group named Scattered Spider that brought down the system of MGM Resorts International. Uh, they claim that they have internal sources that are close to Scattered Spider that are reporting about this. So it sounds like both situations are maybe a little bit allegedly, maybe not 100% perfect yet. But anyway, um, this article goes on to explain that MGM will probably pay the ransom. And it also states that Caesar had gotten hacked and has already paid their ransom but it sounds like maybe the Caesar attack wasn't as big as the MGM attack. Unclear at this point. Uh, so we're going to have to keep an eye on things. It could change again. There might be three or four other groups that either take responsibility or get blamed for it. So we'll have to see, uh, but I'm going to include this link and fix this video. And that brings up a really big point about cybersecurity that I harp on a lot uh, because I usually get mad at my InfoSec team because of the way they act about things. The basics are usually your InfoSec team will come to you and say, hey, all of these systems are vulnerable. There, there's patches that need to be applied. There's zero days. There are operational changes we need to make. And these are all extremely good things, great recommendations but they take time and sometimes there isn't a patch. There's a vulnerability that's come out and a company will just say, we're not patching that. You need to figure out another way to protect yourself. Or if that is a vulnerability in your environment, you're not using our product the right way, et cetera, et cetera. It can cause some conflict in IT teams between sysadmins and InfoSec. And that InfoSec just comes out and says, hey, you need to do all these fixes. And you feel like they're just throwing work at you and they're not really helping you find the fixes or, you know, kind of discuss the vulnerability or look at it in a, in an analytical sense. Like a lot of times, a lot of vulnerabilities are, Hey, if someone has access to the system, they can get control of root or something like that. Well, if you've got a firewall, that's keeping everyone in the world out, except for a very select set of people, you don't really have to worry about that vulnerability so much. It's not that critical, whether or not CVE ranks it as super important, critical. If you have the other things in place that 
protect your systems from those problems, that it's not a problem. On the other hand, <laughs> there is very little anyone can do, infosec, sysadmin, to fix the, the real problem that keeps coming up a lot of times in these attacks, social engineering. You can't patch people as much as I would love to. You cannot patch people. And no matter how much training you give them, no matter you know how many phishing tests you send out into your environment no matter how many times you know you've told them quit putting post quit putting passwords on post-it notes stop letting just anybody into the office you know you go through the training just like everybody else hey don't let somebody in you don't recognize hey don't just give out your password over the phone to anybody because usually your tech support isn't going to ask for your password we don't need it we can get into your stuff without your password if we have the right credentials so we'll never ask for it so what do you do in this situation? In my mind, you honestly, I feel like personally, there should be a almost a license test, much like driving a car, to prove that you're competent enough to use a computer and you should have to retake that test. Now, should that be a government test or should it be a workplace test? That's kind of up in the air. I don't really know if I trust the government because they're not super great with IT. And I don't really trust companies because they can be really lax about it and be like, oh, here's our test. And it just says, do you know where the start button is? You know, do you know how to hide a password? Yes. Okay, cool. You passed. Mm. There needs to be something that sets a guideline of expectations for all users and training expectations for all users, whether they be in tech support or administrative assistants or C-level employees, anything like that. Hey, these are the processes. Follow these processes. Do not change these processes unless we tell you to. So that's a big part of it. Uh, this kind of reminds me of a situation that happened uh, at the, one of the workplaces I worked at before. There was a expectation in place that if a high level person was showing around potential donors or high level guests that they might call and say, Hey, get into petty cash, go take care of this so that I can give them something. Usually it would be like, Hey, go buy some merchandise from the bookstore. I want to give them some t-shirts or hat. And this one time, you know, the person had gotten used to that being the process. They got an email that looked like it was from the C level person who was out of the office. And it said, you know, Hey, I'm showing some guests around, go buy some iTunes cards. That should have been flag number one for that person, but it wasn't, it was, well, this is kind of what happens, but that's kind of a weird request, but I'm not going to question it. I'm going to go get this taken care of. So I don't get in trouble. Luckily this person stopped themselves a little bit before they plugged in a bunch of iTunes gift card numbers into an email address and sent it off, let the security team know, and they handled it. It, it just got taken care of. So, you know, they were able to catch themselves in this situation. This says that they looked up on LinkedIn, a tech support person that worked for MGM, called them up and in 10 minutes was able, were able to say, Hey, can I, I lost my admin credentials. I'm trying to log into this. Can you help me out real quick? Here's my username or, you know, uh, here's my employee ID number, any sort of bit of information they could, they could just kind of get from this person. And they did a password reset, gave them a new password, probably removed MFA off the account so that the person could set up a new device. That might have been what they said. They might say, oh, I got a new phone. I messed up my MFA. Can you help me out? Boom, they're in. Once they're in, they do all the work they need to do because they already have admin access. No patch is going to keep you from admin access. Now, some other things in place could have helped. Just in time admin access instead of a, an admin account that has unfettered access. Uh, but the problem is those are going to exist no matter what. So what are you going to do other than continue training your users and patching your systems in a reasonable manner, <laughs> but it's always going to be people. People are going to be your weakest link because we make mistakes. We're human. Uh, it's just part of it. So anyway, check out these articles, read about this, take it to your teams. If you, if you're part of a sysadmin team and maybe nobody's heard about this yet, talk about it. This is a great discussion topic for any IT team. If you're taking a class about InfoSec or system administration, say, Hey, teach, did you hear about this? Let's talk about it for a few minutes. It's really interesting to see how these groups are getting in. Oh yeah. MGM's ransomware, by the way, and they are not going to pay. So that's a whole thing. Who knows what kind of data they've got? Who knows if they stole a bunch of money digitally? We don't know yet. 
But if MGM's not going to pay, they seem to feel pretty confident in their backups and disaster recovery plan. So hopefully we'll get another article a little bit down the road that tells that they restored and that everything was fine. But until then, I will see you in the next one. Have a good evening.